for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. And good news, I have the owner of Low Overhead Country, better known as Frontier Motors, here live in the studio. Glad to have you with us today. Don Parker here for Talk at 10, the Frontier Motors show on News Talk 1370 WCOA. If you'd like to get the price of a car or a truck or an SUV that you're thinking or buying or selling or trading in, you've come to the right place. Give us a call, 478-3116, 478-3116, and I will connect you with Ivan Struckle, the owner of of Frontier Motors. Good morning, sir. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for the introduction. And this is going to be a half-hour talk radio about cars, like Don said. And we are videotaping this for our Blab TV customers on cable and on satellite. We also are, uh, this is a live 1370 AM talk radio show. So if you're listening to this, like Don said, 478-3116, 478-3116. We can help you with the value of your car. Now, I know you don't need Frontier Motors to get a value. You can Google it on the internet. And the internet has book values. What we do at Frontier Motors, we give you what I consider the real value of a car, and that is based on opinion and based on experience. Frontier Motors is going on 21 years of appraising cars for customers, and this is one of the things that I do for a living. Most of my time at Frontier Motors is spent appraising cars, not selling cars. 75% of our customers are repeat or referral customer, which is kind of unheard of in the used car industry, and there's a couple of reasons for that. And one of the reasons is because we are not here just to sell you a car. We are here to give you advice that when you're in the car market, that there is a dealership that's going to steer you in the right direction. Now, even if you've decided to buy a brand new car, we're still going to tell you what to pay for that new car because I have the new car cost guides at the dealership. These are the invoice guides. Consumers Reports will sell you an invoice for $15. We give invoices away at Frontier Motors. So if you're thinking about buying a brand new car, wouldn't it be nice to know what the dealer paid because it would help you not make a ridiculous offer, number one, save you a bunch of time, give the dealership some profit, but not spend a lot of time negotiating. And number two, what we can help you with, if you're going to buy that brand new car, is let you know what a fair appraisal would be on yours. And again, I'm not talking about a book value. When we talk about books, we've got them with us. By the way, the NADA guidebook that I'm holding up is the guidebooks that our bankers and our credit unions But also, most importantly, a lot of our insurance companies use to value a car based on book values. The other book that we use at a car dealership is called the Black Wholesale Guidebook. These books are uh, the books that the dealers aren't going to want to show you because it supposedly is going to tell you what the dealers are buying cars for. And of course, they're going to want to sell them for a profit. They don't want to tell you how much profit, so they hide those books. We make these books readily available to you. Now, I'm holding up a book. I really don't even subscribe to the book anymore. We get this on our smartphones now. We get it on computers, and we've gone high-tech in the car industry. Matter of fact, when you come in for an appraisal, we don't have a pen and pad. Years ago, Don, we used to write everything down. Right. We we used to have a double, uh, a little clipboard, Mm -hmm. and it would have a carbon copy in it, and we would walk around the car and make notes of the car, every little condition, scratch or yeah, dent, right. condition, how are the tires, is, it, is it the, the glass cracked and things like that. It all goes on the phone. Mm-hmm. Every car now has a, has a barcode. And I a see. lot of people don't know that, but there's a barcode on your car, and I scan the barcode, and all the information from your car automatically goes to my computer, and it'll tell me things like what motor it has. It'll link me to the Carfax reports, the auto check reports. It'll link me to the books I've just discussed, which are the uh, the uh, new car cost guide books. It'll tell me what the retail was when the car was brand new, what the invoice was, and also the wholesale and the retail on the car. It'll also tell me what the competition's selling the car for. So this is all done electronically. So when I hold up this book, it's, it's for my video customers that are watching this, that there are still books like this, but again, they're kind of antiquated. We don't use them anymore. So Frontier Motors, around for 20 years. And if you're not in the car market, you might think this might be a boring show because we do talk about the new car industry a little bit, what's going on in the used car industry. This is not a show about Frontier Motors. This is about what Frontier Motors does for the people in our community when they are ready for a new car. Now, there are other things that we help you with even if you're not ready for a new car. For example, let's say that you got an accident with your car. Someone didn't stop at the stoplight, which seems to happen a lot in our neck of the woods. I think that uh, Pensacola seems to be the red light running capital of the nation. 
I moved here from Wisconsin about 23 years ago, and never happened in Wisconsin. You move down here, everybody's running. These red lights are almost non-existent. Nobody stops. So somebody T-bones you. You've got $10,000 worth of damage on your $15,000 car, but the insurance company has decided not to total the car. They're going to fix your car. Well, what does that do to the value of your car once it's fixed? If you come bring it to a dealership, the first thing a dealership's going to do is scan the ID number like I just told you with my smartphone. It's going to say, whoa, major accident reported, airbags deployed, vehicle had to be towed. The value of that vehicle now has been compromised. It's called diminished value. Frontier Motors is one of the few dealerships that will give you a letter of diminished value you can take back to that insurance company and say, hey, my car is going to have much lesser value on an appraisal than before the accident. The accident was not my fault, and they will normally compensate you for that. Because if I take a car and trade that's had major damage, and we'll use that example I just talked about, let's say it happens to be a 2014 Ford Taurus. It's a $15,000 retail car. You had $10,000 worth of damage. The history reports are all going to show major damage reported. The car fixed like brand new. You took it over to West Florida, Payne Body, or Cooks or one of the great body shops in the Pensacola area, and they did a great job. You can't even tell it's been a wreck, but everybody will know. Right. So you bring it to me because you want to trade it, and I'm going to say, Mr. Customer, I'm really sorry, but... For me to be able to sell that car, I've got to give someone a deal on it. Because why would somebody buy that car? Only one reason. Price. It's going to be cheaper. Diminished value in a car like that, my estimate would be about $3,000 to $3,500. If I can give someone a $3,500 deal on that car, they might say, you know what? I'm going to get that car checked out. You had it fixed at West Florida. Mm -hmm. They guarantee their work. I know they use brand new parts. They used uh, non, uh, no used parts on it. The car looks like brand new. I'll, for $3,000, i will i will take a chance on that car after inspection. And that's how we sell a car like that. Now, I don't go out and buy cars like that, but I do have customers that bring them in. They want to trade them. So you have to be able to get diminished value. So get the word out, folks. Frontier Motors does diminished value letters. You can take back the insurance company. Hopefully, they will make you what we call whole by giving you extra money. Now, what if the car gets totaled? Wouldn't it be nice to know what they should be giving you for that car? Reality and book value. Most insurance companies will take this book value and add the taxes. But what if the car sells for more than book value? I'm going to give you a prime example. Let's say you're driving a 2003 Wrangler with 80,000 miles on it. The, the book books it out for 8,500 bucks. But these Wranglers are selling for eleven and $12,000. I'm not sure if you know this, but the Wrangler is the number one vehicle in the nation for resale value. It has higher resale value than a Lexus, which traditionally has been number one. The Jeep Wrangler has the best resale value of any car. Therefore, the books drop a little bit every month, but the Wrangler doesn't. Hmm. So after about five years of this dropping, the value sits pretty level. You know, you book it out at $8,500. Well, if the insurance company paid you $8,500 for that car, but that car could have been retailed for $12,000, they're not being fair with you. And that's why you stop at Frontier Motors to get our opinion and a book value in writing that you can take back to the insurance company and say, hey, this is what I want for that car. It'll give you a little ammunition, especially if you've got it from a accredited dealership like Frontier Motors. We are the largest dealership in Pensacola for an independent, which means that we don't have a franchise. There's no showroom. You pull up the Frontier Motors, you're going to see between 350 and 400 cars in inventory. Our claim to fame is the alternative to new. And on the screen before I did the show here, I pulled up some of our inventory. We have a 2016 Chevy Sonic. It's got 190 miles on it. Now, that'd be a good car for comparison on a brand new one, right? If you went to Pete Moore or Sandy Sansing, and let's say they don't have any 16 leftovers, they're all sold out because we're halfway into the 17 model year already. But what if they have a brand new 17? So what I urge you to do is get a bottom line price on that car. When I say bottom line, I'm not talking list price and a discount. I'm talking get their out the door price, especially if you've got a trade in, because you want to throw that in the mix, get the out the door price and have them add the taxes, the dock fee, the title tax, all the turbo taxes, everything they got, put it all together and circle that one price. You stop in front of your motors and let's give you a price on our 16 with 190 miles on. And let's see what the gap is. 
Obviously, if it's the same as a 17, I'm going to go tell you to buy the 17. I did a lot of research before I bought this car to make sure I could save you enough money to make it worth your while. The other thing we got, we got a 2017 Toyota Highlander. Bob Tyler sells brand new ones. I've got one with uh, 308 miles on it. So let's compare one with 10 miles to one with 308, and let's see how much I can save you. Ford Escape with 800 miles on it. Buick Encore with 1,000 miles. Infiniti QX50, that's their sport utility, their midsize sport utility. This Infiniti I've got has got the blind side. It's got cameras all the way around, self-parking. It's got all the greatest, great. This Infiniti has 1,700 miles on it. It's going to save you at least $5,000 over the price of a new one. While I'm on the talk about how much you can save, Consumers Reports finally put into writing last year, what I've been talking about for 21 years. In April's edition on page 21, they said the average new car depreciates $9,200 in the first year alone. Now, let me ask you, if you're contemplating buying new and you know that when you drive it off the lot in one year, you're going to lose $9,200, why would you do it? I know, I know why, because some of my customers tell me why they buy a brand new car, because they're worried that if they buy a used car, there's something wrong with it. Well, what we would do at Frontier Motors, number one, we would guarantee that car. If you're buying a car like the one I just talked about, it's got 1,000 miles or 300 miles on it, we're going to make sure that the car is not a lemon law buyback. A lot of people are worried about that, that the vehicle hasn't been in a flood, that the vehicle has not been totaled, that there's no issues with the car. I wouldn't buy that car if there were any issues with it. Now, of course, we do all the history reports first. Then we check it for paint work. Then we talk to the people that we're buying it from. Then we get a guarantee from the auction that I'm buying them from that they will guarantee that we're not buying a bad car. A lot of times, like this morning, for example, in Fort Lauderdale, I've been on about 10 brand new cars today. And the story behind these cars, these were Mitsubishis, are brand new with one had eight miles on, one had 10 miles, one had 12 miles on. Now, I'm buying these at an auction because they were repossessed from a new car dealership. They're brand new cars. They've never been titled. Now, in the state of Florida, because I'm a used car dealer, I can't sell that as a brand new car. Pete Moore has a Mitsubishi dealer in town. Mm -hmm. They'd be really bad at me if I said, hey, I got brand new Mitsubishis. I have to sell them as used but I'm buying them low enough to compete and beat the price of a brand new one. I wouldn't buy them if they're the same price as a brand new one. Why would you go to me? I don't even have a service facility. I would send you over there for warranty work. But if I can save you $4,000 or $5,000 and have the same miles. I get a lot of compliments, Don, when people walk in. Yesterday it was three times where people were buying cars from us and they came over to me and said, hey, I saw the radio show. I watched you. I saw the radio show. Get it? I saw the TV show and I, I heard you on the radio and I really appreciate that you actually do what you say. And what I talk about on the radio show here slash TV show is that we give free advice. In other words, if you're going to buy a brand new car, if you're going to buy a used car somewhere, you need to know what to pay. You need to know what does a Carfax say? You know, I run a Carfax these days. It's $44. It's thirty nine ninety five plus tax. It's about 44 bucks. We run them at Frontier Motors at no charge to you. If you want a Carfax report, no charge. We also run the Auto Check, which is the second largest providers of history of reports in the nation. We run an Auto Check, which is about twenty five bucks. We do that, no charge for you. We tell you also what to pay for that car. And I don't kink somebody else's deal. What if you're buying your neighbor's car and they're asking fifteen thousand dollars for it? Well, what if I have a car just like that? By having four hundred cars in stock, I pretty much have something for everyone. Let's say they're selling a 15 Impala with 20,000 miles on it for $20,000. And I tell you, hey, I got that same car in stock for $16,000. Doesn't mean you have to come run down and buy mine. It's just going to help you make sure that you make the proper offer on the car that you find. Let's say you find one on Craigslist. Let's say you find one at the Lemon Lot. Let's say you find one from another dealership down the road. Before you sign the bottom line, you call Frontier Motors and say, this is what I found. You don't have to tell us what they're asking. We'll just look it up with a matter of minutes. I can look it up and tell you, I can sell you a car just like that for this much dollars. And that's going to help you get a deal. Now, the other thing we can help you with, which is very important, is what should you get for your trade-in? Sometimes you see these phenomenal deals. You see them in the newspaper, on the billboards, these brand new cars, and some of them are really good deals. I'm not saying it's false advertising. If they're advertising a car for sixteen nine. And it's a $22,000 car because they have rebates and incentives. Let's say that's a really good deal. But the way they make money on those cars sometimes is they devalue your trade-in. So you got a $20,000 trade-in and they're offering you $16,000 for that car. Well, how do you know? 
How do you know if it's a good deal or a bad deal? Well, you stop in front of your motors, and I will give you a free appraisal on the car of what I would write a check for. And sometimes people actually take me up where they just sell me the car and they're done. They don't want what they consider a headache of a trade-in. Well, I never know what I'm getting if I'm getting a good deal or not because I got a trade and I'd rather buy the car outright. Well, then sell us the trade-in. And we'll give you an appraisal that's good for seven days. So if you're negotiating on a brand new car and I can't show you one of our brand new cars, like the ones here I would talked about, now let's, let's use the example of the, of the Jaguar F-Type I drove to the radio show here. I've got a Jaguar F-Type. It's a $93,000 car. It's gorgeous, by the way. Twin turbo, 500 horsepower. It's got 2,000 miles on it. I've got it on the internet for $69,000. It's a $93,000 car, and they don't deal on them, folks. You can't get a rebate incentive. You walk into the Jaguar dealership, you might be lucky if you get a couple thousand dollars off. Let's say you buy it for $91,000. I've got that same car on the lot with 2,000 miles on it for $69,000. That's a twenty three. dollars thousand dollar savings and the car's got two thousand miles on it and let's say i still can't convince you i'm gonna buy a brand new one i just won the lottery i don't care ivan i don't care how much i'm saving i'm buying a brand new one well let me buy your trade so you don't have that headache let's say you're doing the dave ramsey thing you're going from three cars down to two cars or you're going to make to take a two-car family and bring it down to one car bring us that car don't put on Craigslist. The first three paragraphs of Craigslist is scam, scam, and watch out for this scam. Don't have people come over at night. Don't have people come over when it's dark. Be careful when you take a check or a cashier's check. And definitely be careful if somebody brings you a, a bag of $100 bills. Just bring us the car. Don't get into that. And if I can't give you enough to make you happy, I can do a consignment. That means we sell it for you. We don't charge a percentage. We don't even charge a fee. What we do is we tell you what we can net you. And I just did this with a customer the other day that listened to the show. He brought us his 2005 Corvette. He dropped it off. And we sold it for him. And he ends up today, as a matter of fact, he's coming in and getting a check for it. Because he didn't want to mess around with it. He's a working man. He said, I don't have time. And when I'm off on the weekends, I don't feel like talking to customers that want to buy my Corvette and take it for a ride. And I definitely don't want to take a trade. And I don't want to negotiate. And I don't want to finance it for someone. So they heard the radio show and they said, let's see what you can do. And I made them an offer, but they said, no, I want a little bit more. So I offered them a little bit more on consignment. And the reason I normally go a little bit more on consignment because I don't have to tie up my cash. This particular car was around $20,000. So I got this car for, for free. I was able to sell it. And I used my $20,000 to buy a different car. So it's a good thing for everybody. But folks, if you're listening to this for the first time, we want you to know that Frontier Motors is here to help you. Obviously, our whole claim to fame is selling cars. That's how we make money. But we know that there's going to be more than one car you're ever going to buy in a lifetime. And if I help you buy a car somewhere else, I always feel the next time you'll give me another shot. Because a lot of people say, well, where should I go and buy a car? And even though you might buy a brand new car, maybe a Pete Morris, Sandy Stansing, or one of the other new car dealerships, we're hoping that you refer us. When you have a friend, relative, or somebody at work that says, hey, I know you bought a brand new car, but what would you, where would you send me to buy a car? And they say, Frontier Motors. Even though I bought a brand new one, every once in a while I had a customer of mine do that the other day, bought an F-150 at uh, World Ford. I didn't get mad at him. Matter of fact, he brought me the vehicle. It was brand new. He, he brought it without the salesman. <laughs> he <laughs> was on a test drive. He still had a demo tag on. He brought it to me, and I looked at the car. I think, that thing, that's a beautiful truck. And I looked at it. It was kind of a unique truck. It was hard for me to find a truck like that. And I said, even though I know I can save you about $5,000, on a used one, I said, this truck is so unique, the chance of me finding this exact truck is going to be pretty slim. So I would go ahead and buy it. But what I can also help is I can appraise your trade and to make sure they give you the proper dollar amount for your car. Wouldn't, isn't that helpful just to have a dealership that does that? And we never make you feel obligated that you should buy it from us. Because we know that's not the only car you're ever going to buy. And we know that everybody talks about us if we help you. If we do what we say, we're going to sell cars. Because you might say, well, I got a nephew who wants to buy a car. He wants to buy a $10,000 Honda Accord. Guess who they call? They call the dealer that helped them and the dealer that stocks 400 cars. Now, we do have a lot of cars, like I just mentioned, with really low miles. But because we have so many cars like that, we also take a lot of inexpensive trade-ins. We don't buy the old cars at auction because the auctions only guarantee the new cars. They don't guarantee the old cars. So I don't buy old cars at auction. But I take them and trade so I can talk to the people that owned them that had them service, how long have you had it? Has it been an accident? Did you, did you change a timing belt? 
Is it a good car? Would you recommend the car? Has it been an accident? Exactly. Our customers don't ask for that. Very rarely do I have anybody ask and say, hi, how safe is this car? And usually it happens with a minivan because you're stuffing your kids in there. But it's really interesting because I put a lot of emphasis on safety. I had this happen the other day where I had a car that had a lot of safety aids. My car was more expensive. But it had blind spot monitoring. It had adaptive cruise control. It had cross, uh, cross lane awareness. It had pedestrian awareness. Now, if you don't know what these things are, look them up. I don't have time in the show to talk about everything, but they can save your life. And folks, if my car has $6,000 worth of safety aids that I'm buying for 25 cents on the dollar, in other words, I can get you those six safety aids for about $2,000, wouldn't it be worth it? If my car was $2,000 more than the competition, but my car could save your life, and people don't know what a, sometimes what adaptive cruise control is and, and automatic stopping. Well, if somebody jams on their brake at the, on the expressway because there's a deer jumping in front of them and they jam on their brakes and you're not paying attention, your car will also jam on the brakes. What if you're texting? Now, I know you're not supposed to do that, but there's not a law against it yet. If there is, they aren't enforcing it. But if you're texting and driving, all of a sudden somebody in front of you and it happened on the bridge to me the other day, I wasn't texting and driving, but I was just minding my own business driving across the bridge and but I'll tell you what, as soon as I went coming over to Hump, there was a backup. Somebody had run out of gas, and there were red taillights everywhere. I just barely missed it. My car did not have the automatic braking feature, and I almost killed myself. It's a very important safety aid, and I would suggest that you think about that when you buy your next car. By the way, in 2018, all cars, by law, are required to have a backup camera. One more year. And every car will have a backup camera. Right now, it's 50-50. I bought a car the other day, Don. I was really ticked off about a $40,000 Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a backup camera. I'm like, come on. A Toyota Corolla has a backup camera standard. I've got, the little, I've got the little port for it. I wonder if it's the one in there and it's just not hooked up because I didn't buy it. No. On my little Mitsubishi. But it's got the, got the little, little aperture for it. Yeah. No, you have to have the big screen. Right, I don't have the screen. If you have the big screen, you're, yeah. not, you're, not, you're, you're not plugged in. Right. But I'm just using an example that the manufacturers are putting more emphasis on safety. Obviously, everybody knows about airbags, and they know about anti-lock brakes. They know about uh, anti-skid and stability track and all that stuff. But the newest aids, of course, are the blind spot monitoring, which is great. I've got that on my car, so I can tell my neck doesn't turn like it used to. So when I'm driving down the expressway, I can't <laughs> see. So when I got that little light on, it tells me that, hey, there's somebody over there, Ivan, don't, don't move over. So that's one of the things that we can help you. And Buick, or top, 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 safety, 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 Buick. And we have a great dealer right here, Vince Wibbs in town. So if you're going to buy a, a Buick, a brand new one, you buy it from Vince Wibbs, of course. And of course, check us out for one that might be a 17 used one. Uh, Consumer Supports came out with a new guide. I love this guide. It tells me which they say is a top pick. And it's not just reliability. Reliability has always been Lexus and Toyota. But they did... More than that, they put together the safety aids, they put together the handling and braking, customer satisfaction and reliability and came up with the number one car. Number one car is Audi. Audi, Audi. Now, before I just came on the radio show, I went down Industrial Boulevard. They got mm -hmm. a, they almost half done with a brand new Audi dealership. Yeah, they're getting there. Very impressive. I cannot believe it. Matter of fact, you're also building a new Honda dealership. Now, a Honda sells a lot of cars, but their Honda, new Honda dealership seemed like it was smaller than the Audi dealership. This Audi dealership is going to be a mausoleum. It's going to be gorgeous, and I am so happy that we're getting a local Audi dealer because we can use them for service. Audis have a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty. Right now, when I sell an Audi that's under warranty, you got to take it all the way to Mobile. Well, not anymore. And Audi is number one. One of the best cars to get is Audi. They didn't used to be. They used to have issues for reliability. Always a great car. But they had issues for reliability. Not anymore. Porsche is number two. BMW is number three. Now, not BMW still is not very good in the reliability. They're only average reliability. But they loved the BMW because of their safety and because of their handling. And customer satisfaction. 100% of BMWs were recommended by their owners. Porsche, too, was 100%. Lexus was number four. Lexus has number one reliability. But they're kind of a little squishy, mushy, a little Lexus. They didn't like the way it handled as much. Subaru, number five. Kia. Kia was number six. Isn't that great? Kia, who would have thought? 20 years ago, my banks wouldn't even finance a Kia or a Hyundai because they wouldn't last for the term of the loan. 
the car would expire before the loan did. So the bank said, I'm not even going to finance it because they people who got to repo them all the time because people aren't making their payments because the engine blew up. Not anymore. Fast forward 21 years and Kia is one of the best cars on the market and the best warranty. I'm not sure if you know this, but Kia and Hyundai and Mitsubishi are the only ones out there with a five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. That's important. Even Lexus only have a four-year 50. BMW, four-year 50. Porsche, four-year 50. Audi, a four-year 50. Not Kia. They got a five-year 60. Mazda is the sleeper. Number seven. Mazda is a great car, folks. If you're going to look at a Honda or Toyota, Look at a Mazda. And they depreciate pretty good, so you can get a really good deal on one. Honda was number nine, then Buick number 10, Toyota number 11, Hyundai number 12, Acura number 13, Volvo, and so on and so on. Folks, we only got a couple of minutes left. 17 and a half million people bought brand new cars yesterday, uh, last, I was going to say yesterday, <laughs> last year. That's a new record. 16 was the record for new cars. Seven, I'm sorry, 16 was a record. 15 was a record. A lot of people are buying brand new cars. It's my job at Frontier Motors that if you're in the new car market, they stop in Frontier Motors and get a price on one that's a 17 model with very little miles. And how much can I save you? You'll be astounded at some of the savings on a one-year-old car or even a six-month-old car. Second thing I can do for you again is I can appraise your trade-in. Third thing I can do is give you an out-the-door figure in writing so you know what the out-the-door figure is. And folks, if you ever run into a dealership that doesn't give you an out-the-door figure, my job is to tell you to walk out. Because if they're not prior to the price and they don't want to put it in writing, why do business with them? Also, if you're doing business with a dealer that sells used cars and they mark the box as is, if they're not even confident enough in their car to give you a three-month warranty like we give you, I'd walk out. Anything with 150,000 miles on a bunch of motors, you get a three-month, 3,000-mile warranty. If it's got over 150,000 miles, you even get a one month, at least something, so you're not, you're not, you know you're not buying that car as is, just in case that motor or the engine or transmission is bad. Very, very important. Letter of diminished value. If you get a car accident, you come to us, and we'll tell you how much your car is worth now. You should get extra money from the insurance company for that. If you're going to buy a brand-new car, we'll tell you what to pay, what the invoice is. If you're going to be buying a used car somewhere or you're going to sell your car on your own, I can run you a Carfax report so you can share it with the next owner. Obviously, you'd want that if it's good or bad. At Frontier Motors, we run both history reports, and they go in the glove box of every car. You don't even have to ask for them. Check out our website at FrontierMotorsInc.com. Just Google Frontier Motors. There's about five of them in the nation. We're the largest one, so you'll see 400 cars, 31 detailed photographs. Check out our Facebook. Like us on Facebook and check us out on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on the radio, if you want to watch it, which I don't know why you'd want to, but if you want to watch my ugly mug on TV, just Google YouTube, put in Frontier Motors, and you're going to see the latest episodes on there, a half-hour show. And what we can do, again, is make sure that when you're in the car market, you don't get ripped off. Free advice. That's what we specialize in Frontier Motors. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll be the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier. We got the right price. Frontier. We'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors. Low overhead. French.